Wow, this is another very wonderful moment, Easter Monday. And it's a special Monday for everyone you know, throughout the world because everywhere throughout the world there's celebration, there's political days, everyone is going to make some kind of a celebration because of a truth. The Lord Jesus rose again from the dead. You know, I started a message last week. I titled, My Father Owns the Land. I couldn't finish because I wasn't going to hurry through that message. It's important that you as a child of God, you as a minister of the gospel, and you that is following Jesus Christ must know you are joint heirs with Christ and you ought to enjoy what Christ has paid for. And that is for you. And that's why I've come again to continue with that message that started that has to be completed tonight. Don't go away. I'm taking you straight to the message. Even as we continue, you know, uh, this episode to talk about the topic I titled, My Father Owns the Your Father Owns the Land. Don't go away. My Father Owns the Land. You can't oppress me in the land where my father is the owner. I'm the son of my father. How many of you are sons of the Father God? And if God is your father, you as a son, as a, as a daughter, I want to announce and declare to you, the devil is a stranger in your father's land. He has no right to deny you of what rightly belongs to you. It's important you know that even though all things are yours, if you decide to sit down and say, I'm waiting, it may not come to you. Sometimes, you know, some people may want you to say, ah, hey, you people, one of the fruits of the fruit of the spirit is patience, gentleness. Yes, you apply it at the proper place. You can't be, you can't be patient with uh, all the barrenness and you know, all the frustrations and the delay and disappointment. And so you must be active, you can't be passive. You must be committed. You can't be just no stay like a if there is nothing for you or that it will just come your way. In Luke chapter what? 15. Go to verse 29. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me what? Can you imagine? See, as he's accusing the father, and the father will still answer him. No, we, we try to turn it against God. I say, God, now you know, God, God said it's available. It's only you that he didn't ask for it. That I, you have not given me a key that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this divested it, this thy son was come, which had devoured thy living with her lords, and has killed those who are not making it. They have they, they are quickly having accusations against people. Said so that that you know which office in the work when did they get that in? Where where is he working that he is having all those things? They will want to look for faults. Eh, eh, was he with the prodigal son when he was spending it with her lords? Thou hast killed, killed for him the fatted cow. Look at the answer. And, his, and he said, and the father said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me. You always stay here, you full grand. And all that I have is done, only that you have not asked for them. Everything you, you see here now, now is supposed to be your own. But he didn't, uh, uh, the things are there. He didn't ask for it. He didn't stretch out your hand to get what belongs to you. And that was why when um, the, the matter passed, be careful. The seven lepers said, the four lepers rather, said, we can't sit down here until we die. It's time for violence. Always it's time for violence. My brother, what, the problem with us is that we don't know what rightly belongs to us in the kingdom. Some of us, we are going about like a thief. You know, nothing, there's nothing that's actually made available for us. For example, now, if you look at Luke chapter 10, verse 19. He said, Luke chapter 10, verse 19. He says, Behold, I give unto you power. Stop right there. Behold, I give unto you what? So power belongs to you. The, the passage we read from Psalm 112, verse 3, wealth and riches shall be in his house. So it's available for you. That is your right. Your being a heir, being a child of God. 
Your father who owns everything, it's not for him to enjoy. Those things are not for him to enjoy. He has nothing to do with those things. He says, the silver is mine, the gold is mine, and I know the cattle in the thousand hills. If I needed anything, I won't ask you. It is that they are for you to, to freely enjoy. enjoy. When you look at the scriptures, the Bible says, the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. So health is for you. The Bible declared, there shall not cast their young, nor be barren in the land. So, fruitfulness, children, for you. When you look at the scriptures, the Bible further declares, and scriptures cannot be broken, that all nations shall call you blessed. You cannot say you want to travel abroad and they turn you back. As they are going to the day, they say, come and get your visa. I don't know whether the person is here. Those things are there. And so, you must know what rightly belongs to you. The prodigal son knew this. And he made his demand. And the father gave him. The other son didn't ask. Because the, the law of the kingdom says, ask, it shall be given you. We are we're, we're, we're trying to say that uh, uh, Solomon, uh, he had an open check. Your check is opener than Solomon's check. If there's anything like that. No, you can put it in your dictionary at the other part of the dictionary. Just open, open, openest. Eh? Yes. So, so you see that Solomon, God asked him, ask what you need. I will give you. Solomon asked. Then he said, ah, Solomon had opportunity. God gave open check. God, in, and that time there was no grace. Your own open check plus grace. Because it will give you, that's why Apostle Paul now came to tell us that our own is more opener than Solomon's own. It will give you exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think. Don't you see? So if you are where you are, it's not God that has kept you, kept you there. We are trying to give a wrong impression about God. Go for what rightly belongs to you and God will give you. He said, concerning the works of my hands, command you me. That is the scriptures. Your father owns everything. Brothers and sisters, healing belongs to you. Power belongs to you. Wealth and riches belong to you. You belong to the top. You belong to the high table. You belong to, uh, the, uh, to the place where men should celebrate you. You are to be fruitful. You must go for this. Not that these things are just there. You must go for this like the, lep like the um, lepers did in 2 Kings chapter 3. Let me show you from 2 Kings chapter 3 before I round up. Chapter 7 rather. See what the Bible says. I read from verse 3. And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? God's command is do something. Go. Is somebody getting me? And you are sitting down complaining. You are doing nothing, complaining. You are not making contest, but you are complaining. Why sit we here still until we die? Verse 4. If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. If we sit still here, we die also. Now, therefore, come, let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall but die. And they arose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the utmost parts of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots. God is preparing a ground for you that you have never taken over. Amen. As soon as they decided to move, as soon as the prodigal son said, I will go back and meet his father. He didn't think about all the offenses he had committed. He says, my father. Amen. Don't be too guilty not to confess your sins to God. What I've done is too bad. I don't think God will accept it. I can't confess it again. No. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. They be, they be red like uh, crimson, they shall be as wood. So, the prodigal son 
would not just condemn. Some of us we condemn ourselves too much. Even when we want to ask God for anything. He said, I don't think God will give me because my life, even though I'm going to church, this I did, this I do. No, go and meet him. Start with, I'm very sorry. Before you even say, I'm sorry, God, God's already dishing out. He knows what you need. He knew that the prodigal son is a child of class, of taste. I don't think you're hearing me now. That this guy lost good things and great things. And therefore, when he saw him back, while he was struggling to confess things, he was saying, I know, I know what you need. I know what you need. <laughs> bring, bring a golden ring. Bring a fatted calf. Bring all those things so that when his friends will come, they'll be happy that his dad organized a wonderful party for him. Does your father know you as somebody who likes good things? Your father in heaven. And so, as soon as the prodigal son left that place, the father was already, you know, in the state of, you know, expectation. Expecting his prodigal son to come back. As soon as he saw him, many things. Now, as soon as the leper said, let us go, God has started a system. The Syria, and he, and he directed them to the camp. Some of, some of us will go to the places where we cannot get anything. Because they said, if we go to the city, there's nothing there. Whom are you meeting for assistance? Those who are even struggling to survive. Amen. General Devil Stephen with some revival. Stay tuned. Take your step. Only if you become bold, Holy Ghost will take over. If you take it by violence, Holy Ghost will do everything to make sure you enjoy it. When you rise up into action, everyone is there to support you. One thing you must understand is that they have their are faces prepared to intimidate you. Don't look at their faces. There are people who will frown at you when they see you going to where they, they, they think that they are the only people that will go there. They will frown, but don't look at their frowns. God told Jeremiah, don't mind their face. They can harden their faces, but that does not. Just take your step. Do not mind their body movements trying to make you feel inferior. You will arrive there to where they are. You must not mind their threats or intimidations. Because Shambach said, the timid faith will be intimidated. Your father owns all these things and they all belong. He has given them to us to freely enjoy. You need not to sin against God. Because God is taking us to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. If you are ready to go up in life, accept the suffering of Christ so that you will go up in life. I will prophesy you. I will say good things. But you need to hear the truth. This is your year of breakthrough. This is your year of breakthrough. It is your year of blessing. It is your year of favor. It is your year of marching out. In the name of Jesus. Where do you have that case? Is it in your family? God will treat your case. Where do you have that case? Is it in your office? God is going to treat your case. In less than no time. No power. Can the cancer of the Lord. He said, I will do my pleasure. Are you testing this morning? God has water for you. Are you in need of water? God has water. Are you in need of money? He has money for you. Are you in hunger? There is food. When it is your seed time to be blessed, God will bless you. When it is your harvest season, God will bless you. They seem to face you every day. There's one thing I know for sure That Jesus is the way Let me hear you now General Dennis Timmons is back The other day I told you of this testimony I had That this young man wanted to read medicine in the university He went to write jam He had 110, 110 for medicine and then uh, he, he met his pastor i want to go to the university i've i've written jam i've passed and the pastor said what do you want to read medicine so what is your score 110 sir 
Which of the universities will take you for another attorney? Or you want to be a native doctor or you want to... <laughs> the real message we are talking about. The brother said, ah, uh -uh. you told us that if we believe, all things are possible. I mean, I believe that I can read medicine. So, he, he went to University of, uh, that is Abu, Amadabali University. Okay. As he got there, he was at the gate. He was looking into the university and a year ago study. He was just thinking about 110. Already the pastor has already spoken some kind of things to his house. So he was having small fear, but he still has some boldness. He said 110, but here, medicine. I will read medicine. While he was there, one big man with a big jeep with his children inside air conditioner jeep drove to the gate. They were looking for admission. As he saw the young man there, Holy Ghost arrested them. Take your step. Holy Ghost. If you become bold, Holy Ghost will take over. If you take it by violence, Holy Ghost will do everything to make sure you enjoy it. The guys, as they got there, he pressed the uh, glass down. Wow. The glass went down. He now saw what was inside. He said, wow. Even the air conditioned air that came out, the conditioned air that came out from the car, he was already enjoying temporary air conditioner outside. But afraid. Then he said, come. He said, hey, what have I done now? I stay for the gate. Is it because? No, I'm at the corner. I said, no, don't worry. Come, just I want to see. It. Um, do you know the uh, admission officer's uh, office? Officer. He said, eh, admission. Okay. Come inside. He said, hey, come inside. You will enter air conditioner, air conditioned cow. This one that every day you walk on the road, your good color don't change to black. That thing will change. It's because we have not taken decisions. If you decide that the next quarter, my color will change, something will happen to you. Just take a, take, make a decision. I will remain on this seat or in this condition by, in, by the end of next quarter. They, they took him into the car. He saw those big men's children sat with them. They were looking at him. Anyhow, you look at me and they enter the car and enter. Now, wait. <laughs> then they drove in. As they drove in, not too far, somebody was driving out, flashed, started flashing his car. His own friend was the VC. He didn't even know that his friend was there. The big man's friend. So he stopped. They started exchanging the greetings. So what's going on? What's up? And then he said, I'm looking for admission for these, my children. All of them in the car are looking for admission. They are all his children. He said, let's go to the office. They went. Do you know the guy with 110 had his admission letter first before the big man's children? Big man's children. Because he, he took the bold step of faith. I told you of the guy that went to look for work with a baptismal certificate. I'm thinking that we shall give baptismal certificate in this church again. So some of us will take you to look for employment. <laughs> so the pastor told us that somebody got admission, I mean employment with baptismal certificate. I, I own this from Enter Force. They won't turn you back in the name of Jesus. God opened the door for him. And he entered and he got his blessings. I want to tell you that when you rise up into action, everyone is there to support you. One thing you must understand is that there are faces prepared to intimidate you. Don't look at their faces. There are people who will frown at you when they see you going to where they, they, they think that they are the only people that will go there. President wants to uh, come to River State Auto he, he is landing at the airport and you appear there. So people that were dancing to wait for president saw you now they stopped dancing and said, What do you say come to do for airport? So the airport now you're old. <laughs> all of us the president now are all all of us president. So people, that, that, when they see you in bank, they say, hey, you you go, you follow person come, say no, I come to take my own money. My, me, I get account. Amen. Amen. They will frown, but don't look at their frowns. God told Jeremiah, don't mind their face. They can harden their faces, but that does not. Just take your step. Do not mind their body movements. Trying to make you feel inferior. You will arrive there to where they are. If you can take the right step. In fact, you must not mind their threats or intimidations. Because Shambach said, the timid fail to be intimidated. Your father owns all these things and they all belong. He has given them to us to freely enjoy. 
But we have not enjoyed them because we have not received them. Somebody can say, take this key. If you don't take it, you won't enjoy. Am I right? Oh, welcome right back. And that was just the conclusion of the message I started last week. My father owns the land. Brothers and sisters, your father owns the land. You that is watching this program, if you are born again, if you are a child of God, you cannot operate in poverty, in, in sickness, in, in failure, in barrenness. Because Apostle Paul declared, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give to you a hope and a future. He says, to prosper you. And that's God's plan. I wish above all things that I may yes, prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. That is the plan of God. That thou shalt above only and not be in. That is the plan of God. So right now. I am going to pray so that whatever the enemy was denying you of, you are going for your father's soul. You are going for what rightly belongs to you, just like the prodigal son did. He met his father. Father, I have portion of the goods that you have. And God is ready to give to you. Such and towards the television. Believe God for a miracle. Confess your sins. Let Jesus come into your life. Then, times of refreshing, restoration shall come from the presence of the Lord. Father, I thank you for these ones who have watched this telecast. I thank you because they are patiently listening to you. And I pray that because they have heard your word, let every contrary thing in their life, contrary to the plan of God in their life, expire right now in the name of Jesus. I come against the sponsors of sickness. I come against the sponsors of poverty. I come against the sponsors of barrenness. I come against the sponsors of failure. Working against these people, against the plan of God. I conquer those wicked forces and I cast them out of their lives in the name of Jesus. I lose you from the chains of barrenness, from the chains of poverty, from the chains of frustration and failure. I declare freedom for you that you might enjoy what your Father has provided for you in the name of Jesus. Receive your breakthrough. And possess your possession that will bring glory to God. Thank you, Father, because I live answer. In Jesus' mighty name, I've prayed. Amen and amen. So we give praise to God because our Father owns the land and we cannot suffer in His land. Till next week, I'm your daddy Stephen. Remain in your blessings. Everywhere I look, there's fear around. Many minds are fainting. If you want to give your life to Jesus and be saved, please say this prayer and be me. Almighty God, I have been a sinner. Please, Lord, forgive me as I now repent from all my sins. I accept and confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me and accepting me as your own. In Jesus' name, Amen. Worship with us at Liberation Power Ministries, number 82, El Apawa Road, off Ada George Road, mile 4 for Tarkat, or call 003-310-7866. Email us at edgeforce at yahoo.com. He will be here again next week for another moment of freedom. Jesus is Lord.